below in this example, we would like to construct a free body diagram, FBD, of this simply supported beam called member A. B. We're also asked to include numeric solutions for the two reactions, and that's something that should be, you know, implied, even if it didn't state that explicitly. You can assume that's generally the case when someone asks you to construct a free body diagram and they give you values, they probably want values on your solution. All right, so we've got a PIN pin connection over to the left. We have a roller or a pin roller over to the right. And I know a lot of you in statics may have had an instructor that preferred this symbol. Um, the symbol that I'm using means exactly, precisely, the exact same thing as kind of just drawing that as a circle or a sphere, same thing there. All right, so what we want to do is free the body from the support. So I'm going to use my tool and I'm just going to pow, disconnect the pin roller at B, poop, disconnect the pin connection at A. I'm going to do a copy merged, edit paste, and put my free body in process over to the right. All right, now all I need to do is replace these supports with the actions they exert on my free body, right? So my body is member AB, right? That's my body, that's my free body. And what I wanna do is replace the supported A with a reaction, I'll call that A sub Y, kind of pop a coordinate system x, y there, and replace the pin roller at b at b sub y. Now I know in statics you were often trained um, to also kind of clue into the fact that you might have this horizontal reaction, which I could call a sub x here, but by inspection that's going to be zero, right? I don't need a horizontal reaction to place this body in equilibrium. So in this class, if you find one of those zeros, you're kind of graduated beyond that calculation. Oops, that's not going to work. Let's do it that way. Boom. You've kind of graduated from that calculation. It's okay to omit that. Okay, so these zero vectors can be omitted as a general rule. All right, one other thing that I wanted to do, um, so I'm going to go into my layers, turn the volume down on 13, pop in 14, and you may remember from statics these ideas of statically equivalent systems. And what, do, what does that mean? Okay, so essentially, anytime you have a system of force vectors, of force vectors that may include a couple moments into the system, a distributed load or a line load like the one we've got here, um, you are allowed to convert it into anything else that suits your needs, provided that it is statically equivalent to the original system. Okay, so in other words, I'm going to take all the area under this curve, I'm going to convert that line load into a concentrated load or an applied force. And I remember this is one to commit to memory if you haven't done so already, that the center of area of a triangle, the center of area of a triangle lies at the third point of that triangle from the heavy end. Let me draw that just to make 100% sure you understand what I mean there. So here's the triangle, the third points of the triangle. So I'm just taking this length and dividing it into three. Now then you ask yourself, does it make sense for the center of that area to be here, or does it look like it needs to go there? And it's always going to be on the heavy end of the triangle, which is why I have drawn it there. Okay, turn that layer off and give myself a new one. All right, so we know that we're going to convert that amount of force per distance into some resultant force. I'll call that F sub R, F for force, R for resultant. And in order to figure out what that is, all I need to do is take the area under the curve. In other words, the area of that triangle. So let's write that out first. F sub R is equal to formula for area of a triangle, base times height over two. My height is 10 kips or kilopounds per foot. And the base of the triangle is nine feet. And don't forget that one 
half modifier because we're not taking the area of this rectangle. We're taking exactly half of it. So don't forget that. And as you work through this class, even if you feel like you're kind of past this point in your mathematical career, do get in the habit of crossing out units as you go. We see that we're going to get final units in kips or kilopounds. 10 times 9 is 90. 90 divided by 2 is 45. So I can report my answer as 45 kips. And I'll add that to my picture over here. Now, how do I know that this, these two systems are statically equivalent? Well, all I'm doing, my rules for static, statically equivalent systems, um, they look like this, okay? So if I call this over here, if I call this system one over here, if I call this system two, all I need to do is make sure that the summation of the forces in the x direction system one is equal to the summation of the forces x direction system two. Similarly, similarly, a similar relationship can be written for y direction force equilibrium and moments about any z axis in system one versus system two. Okay, now in 3D, of course, you have six of these to check. Right now, this is a 2D planar problem, so we've only got these three. And do you agree with me that the net effect of this distributed load on the body in terms of the magnitude of the force and its placement are absolutely statically identical? And the answer is yes. And again, you know, this is supposed to be a statics review. And I'm hoping that this level of explanation is hitting the middle of the bell curve, you know, and benefiting the majority of students. If you need more in depth, uh, come to office hours and I'm happy to help with that. All right, so we've got our equivalent force here. Um, oh, also K. So K is the symbol for kips. That means kilopounds or 1,000 pounds. And sometimes you see that written with the pound sign. <laughs> So one kip can be written with a K. You can write out the word kip or the word kips. You can write out kilopounds or you can convert it into pounds like that. So just some unit stuff to be aware of. All right. All right, so we're up to 45 kips here. Now we need our reactions. We've got two unknowns, A sub Y and B sub Y. And now let's put Let's um, run our equations of equilibrium to compute those numeric solutions for the two reactions. And you know, summation of forces in the x direction equals zero, that's all well and good, but it is not helpful. Summation of forces in the y direction is equal equals zero. That one is helpful. Summation of moments about any z-axis equals zero. That one is helpful. So my strategy is going to be doing this one first because I know if I sum moments about certain places like this a-axis, or let me say this more precisely, the axis in the z-direction coming out of your screen through point A, if I do that moment summation, A sub Y doesn't enter the formulation because it's coincident to A, and I've got B sub Y at a certain distance, I've got 45 at a certain distance, I can do my, um, I can solve for B sub Y directly. So I'm going to, my strategy is to do this equation first, solve for my first unknown, and then I can use this equation to solve for my second unknown. All right, summation of moments. And at this point, it is pretty customary for engineers to swap out their notation. So this idea that you are summing about a z-axis is implied because this is a 2D planar problem. So I'm going to say summation of moments about the z-axis coincident with A is equal to zero. Next up, I count how many terms are in that particular formulation. And I have got 45 kips at this moment arm, 
right? So I'm measuring from the line of action of that force, the perpendicular distance back to the point about which I'm summing moments. So I've got 45 kips in the mix. I've got B sub Y. There is the line of action of B sub Y. Its perpendicular distance from A is the entire length of the beam. Those will be the two terms in my equation. Let's get those dimensions here on our little free body. Hip force is going to be located at that third point of the triangle on the head heavy end. And that one's just going to be three feet. Nine divided by three is equal to three. All right, we are ready to go. First term, 45 kips. First distance, three feet. Now let's figure out the sign. That 45 kip force tends to rotate the body clockwise for a moment summation. That means that we want to use a negative sign for that component of our moment equilibrium equation. Okay. Okay, so clockwise means negative sign here. Another thing to do, start practicing the right hand rule now. So we, when we get into 3D stuff later in the course, that transition will be easy. Here's how you do it. Stick out your right hand, curve your fingers in the direction, curve your fingers with the rotation of the rigid body about A or the way that the 45 kip force tends to rotate or pivot the body about A. Your fingers of your right hand curl with that curly arrow. Your right thumb should be pointing down or into the screen. That's like a thumbs down negative. All right, let's go to the next term. So we got to deal with B sub Y. That's our unknown. What distance is it from A? That's going to be nine feet. That's my moment arm. Force times distance, of course, is moment. And I can do this sign one of two ways, OK? So method one, kind of a 2D mindset, that B sub Y tends to rotate the body counterclockwise about A. Therefore, I can use a positive sign in my moment summation for that component of moment equilibrium. Okay, other way to do it, other way to do it, prepping for 3D, you're still visualizing the exact same rotation. This time, with your right hand, curl your fingers with that curly arrow that I drew. Note that your right thumb is up, thumbs up positive. That one gets a positive sign which we've already got right here. Okay, those are the only two things in our moment summation. So that is going to be equal to zero. Once you run that through your calculator or through your head, uh, whichever, you will get a value of B sub Y is equal to positive 15 kips. And what that positive sign says, that's all that it means, all that the positive sign means is that the direction that we assumed for B sub Y is indeed correct. We made a hypothesis and we confirmed it. That's what that positive sign means. Okay, let's do our other equation. So now we're ready to do summation of forces in the Y direction is equal to zero. And how many terms do we have? One, two, three. We have one going down, we have two going up. Okay, let's do that one. A sub Y is upward, that's unknown, positive sign for up. 45 kips is down, negative sign for that. B sub Y is now known, upward, 15 kips, positive sign. Set that equal to zero. Our solution is positive 30 
KIPS. And again, what does that sign mean? All it does, all it does is say that the direction we assumed upward is indeed correct. Okay, so for our final answer, all we would want to do is something like this. I am going to, let's see, jump some color here. If Zoom would get out of my way. Okay, let's jump some color there and put in another layer. So here's a good example of what your final answer would look like. It could look like this. 45 kips, A sub Y is 30 kips, B sub Y is 15 kips. Okay, notice by the way how on the heavy end of that load, on the heavy end of the triangle, the left side, you're picking up the lion's share of the reaction here and a much smaller amount over here. In fact, you're getting twice as much here than on the other side. Kind of an interesting relationship to take note of. Um, so that could be one solution to this problem. Now, some people get picky about weird things about free bodies. So some people are super duper picky about making sure that's on every picture. Some people are super, super duper pixie, picky <laughs> about making sure that these dimensions are on the drawing. Uh, for me, it's kind of context specific. Okay, so sometimes that information is needed. Sometimes it's not. Just depends on the context of what you're doing and what else is going on and what other information is on the page. Another way to answer the question. So the question says, construct a free body of member AB, include numeric solutions. This is also a valid free body that is in static equilibrium. This is just as correct. You can do this, this, and then keep that line load that was originally given to us. That's 10 kips per foot peak intensity force per distance right there at that point. Of course, the intensity is zero here. It's five halfway in between and so on and so forth. Um, but that solution would also be 100% correct, 100% accurate, and ask the question that the problem is asking. That's the end of the video. Thank you.